Hey, what's up everyone? Hey, Jason here from IndyCar Ministry. And obviously I am not at Indianapolis Motor Speedway right now. Um, thankful for a couple of days and for Allegiant for cheap flights so that I could fly home and um, having a young family to see them. Uh, you know, two weeks on the road is a long time to be away from a family and especially when they're seven and two. And so thankful that I have that ability to do that. But I do feel compelled today um, real quick before we jump into our uh, journey in in Luke, um, giving you an update over the ministry and what's happening and what we're experiencing, what we're seeing this month. And and I got to just be honest with you, man. It's uh, It's been a really, really powerful month. I mean, of course, you all have seen some of the highs and lows of what's happening with Graham and all of the, and Stefan and Catherine and all of that going on. And certainly prayers for that whole situation for Steph and his healing. But there's a lot that happens behind the scene that you'll never hear about because it's it's in team members' lives, it's in officials' lives, it's in it's in the behind the scenes people in their lives. And and I gotta just tell you, this is probably one of the heaviest, one of the most challenging Mays I've ever been a part of. Um, I think in the last two weeks, I've heard of more people wrestling with stage three, stage four cancer. Family members finding out they have cancer. Family members that are passing. We have people in our community navigating death right now. Um, I've had counseling moments with people where their siblings, there is attempted suicide. And, you know, the list goes on and on. You know, we, we love this sport, right? We love the thrill of competition. And, of course, we love the Indianapolis 500. But the lives that are, are going on behind the scenes are just, tough tough and on top of that they're working 12 hours plus a day they're preparing for the greatest spectacle in racing and then as soon as that's done they're preparing for detroit and then road america and there's no time to to have peace there's no time to navigate grief there's no time to to navigate life you just put your head down and keep working and so i just i just felt compelled i want to share that with you so that you know what's happening behind the scenes um, that there are people just struggling and, and frankly need prayer. And so please join us in prayer daily for this community. Um, they need it. They're hurting. And so with that said, I appreciate, you know, letting me kind of vent on that for a minute. Um, it is going to be an exciting weekend and, you know, we'll be back every day starting Thursday. Um, Chuck, in fact, Chuck will be at IRP for the USF series on Wednesday. Um, I'll be back in Indy this week. So it's just, there's no rest. Um, super thankful that I could at least come home for a day or two to see my family. But having said that, we are going to jump into Luke 6. You know, Chuck talked a lot about it last week, covered a lot, did a phenomenal job. There are just a couple things I want to add to it. You know, Jesus, you know, he went all night and he prayed. And and certainly the, the only way to make a real decision is through prayer. Um, but what's interesting to me is the people that God chose. He literally chose the apple dumpling gang, right? He chose the least of these. He chose those that make absolutely no sense. You see, back then, it was the smart kids that traveled with the rabbi that went into to becoming a Pharisee. And it was the kids that weren't the smart enough that went to work for the family farm. They went to the fisher. They went to the boats to go fishing. And that is this list of people. They were those that weren't smart enough to go follow a rabbi. They weren't the overachievers. And yet that's who God chose to change the world. And, and I, you know, I don't know about you, but I find that powerful for me. And I find it full of hope because you know what? I'm not the smartest of the bunch. I'm not. I'm not the elite. I'm not, you know, the superstar. And most of us aren't. And God wants to use you and God wants to use me. And I love it. And I find so much encouragement that, you know what? Um... God does the biggest and most amazing things through the least of these. If we're willing to let him, if we're willing to raise our hand and say, God, use me. That's all it takes is a willing heart and a willing spirit and God will do the rest. Here, God chose 12 men that radically changed the world. These 12 men, you and I are sitting here talking about the scripture because they carried on what God and what Jesus started. And so I don't know what that looks like for you today, but I need you to know that God wants to use you. Yes, your salvation is for you and, and God loves you 
Um, but it doesn't stop there. And there's far too many Christians that stop with salvation. It is not a golden ticket just to go to heaven. Sure, we got heaven to look forward to, but we got a lot of work to do. And so I say that to encourage you. Don't diminish what God wants to do through your life. He wants to use you. He wants to use you to impact those around you. So I don't know what that looks like for your life. I don't know where you work. I don't know what your neighborhood looks like. But those that you live, work, and play with around the area, love them. Point them to Jesus with your life. Um, man, it's an incredible trip. And I, and I pray that you will see God using you in mighty ways. Anyway, y'all, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Big weekend. Please, please, please. We just ask that please pray. Please pray for this paddock. Please pray for Chuck and I. We've got some long days ahead and certainly need your prayers. And as always, you know, we appreciate those of you that support us. This ministry wouldn't exist without you. Um, you're amazing. Have a good day.